Welcome to the evening session of the three wonderful days of glory. And I believe that you already have no wonderful time from whatever page you are watching, especially Internet Church. Welcome to the program. I'm Edmond Sokwerde, and you're in for a wonderful time. We'll continue from where we stopped in the morning, and tonight we will be discussing about the Father of Glory. The thought that I want to leave with you before we get into the Word of God and pray is, imagine if your Father is glory. Now, if you imagine if your Father is glory, imagine how you will be. What, how, what, how will it affect you? If your father is glory. Now that's what we're discussing in this wrapping session, wrapping up session of today, which is the second session for the three days of glory. And you will see amazing things. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Let's pray in the Spirit a while before we move on to the hymn session and get into the Word. Abjos endi bla ak shubarada. Male kasate bale badus. Ma shode be kala ma ma le brede ke setosh. Ma po kalege di baru kosu teke ne ma ma radet. Abashane ma le prato sa perekadet. Ampot ne pa la vo shoket ne poro kosu de bish. Abone me kaleshis otlike fat mareko. And stopre ike juice o ma kalabashare. A kere doni se de kart. A kere bokulu se brodo kudusish. A brante na mokila kare da sopro deri se ke shotubaka. A ma i doze levi o hollevo juzi kiri bak. Kam tek so gimba andu beri di so ke toma ava gamba loma e justu giba. A pedo suit leka. An enemy beiches suit levro brata de socketishes. A de ketho shimbek na mole griatus ombere caches. Ompech a bene bechu ditorak a dexoc se predeke. A moshatu kemema. Shabre de kesto capatama le badema remaske prot nidis o level of ashes. Ma pra enko beiva su si kedeira. Ramro gevra bosh enkta paratis. Medigi bos ante shu sobeira lovra aktesis o veneme ki paktesis mav endus elususushis. Ama shedo brola edu gia bon teke tu sekto mereri. Ama jo kandiva nemo shakleko ma pre terezikro akshes amapa. Amo zegadi pro accede biro antes o kama i bagdes o kebekt onde vezis o kababa shasets. Ame sobre de iki palo te pedamosude. Ang se de merito as emahum. A se meroklo epeke. Are ka sobre. Ene mene meno mo lusit leira de maferos osh anemo holobaba. Enemisito alman de brateris o carimande, ne solem anches olivijus ikare. Abacama mame tus ovlem ax ejus olebren tot nesis olevlatis. Marotis op enjus apacat negedicle. Apsu se pro onke mexun sec ne maculec toc sec tomatara. Apsu se pone peido soc. Tore egivactic soap magma gidegede toro to section nava de boca lekesis. Ambajiso be ande bolo mafo for si de baholo baba. Ashko be de mahu halene ma soda badoma. Eni mone me veri brigri dogskes kopokskes kamanamanamanim ratose so deida. Rangra axe jozompe eribak. 
Arebo con sop merigere, cortne jusicit icta moces. Ame fompendes ompre icrichoc sedne id aradari, sec chombe egedesopa. Embo benemos sobrede, qui prap to me tu me sertu. Embo bere navas equipa, to seque tema mapa. Ane me fofi sope, ite bom, matike, sature, banama, riqueto, sodobodobo no mo sedeba. E de vedu brio toscoba, ex soce ne mama. I baro do mexicje, gra teko suk tere gri grato skombra haia. I prodo sende pra anfoxim i shota apa haia. Ene me do dus edo kron anjis opa ane mo para hi. Peri so enizas are bojas i prado sembre dekretuk sikredo komema. Am seke bode kiksok si de memoduri akce sopradere imbra aneit ondis o sik tokra amma prahegare. A sobera dene. A leire sopo, leire lupt, leire lupt hapu, lexit lo londere fektisesh. Ni pradoset ne rikla aksha nomena. Ane monte eksok she lira lakte o prade. Si dobro nentis at lira amans opere edi salaflo mes istoroban. Ane mo siplo engis o gla evacho ledi na miso glebara. Ansi stobre endu gla ki isok shandabere ikche sobero dole. Akte peira brut Tik su chuni dekla aksexo mena men. Amazone iskoše brida alambo kente mo sukre. Ento rog dere kritok suk shindi braktore mamere gredi griško. Ma pekoba žink sekre dukti bra dentona akše do binkole matira ba. Afke bobon si frende rigri oksem bra tendo akše brude eksiso prado lena unci dekler. Rapo keme so ma hende grido la eksiso. Eka suje sikto marhatarido, apek soje sut ne di giliba ojo le dixe. Sek lido, men de safa men po akse ture bene mato. E se do me de lula klaha sek dari. Ne de bratos, we worship you, Father. Thank you, Father, for this time of refreshing that you've given to us. Thank you, Father, for your spirit that you've released upon us. Thank you, Father, for the glory. Hallelujah. That you are revealing in us from one realm to another. We bless your name. We thank you, Father. Oh, could it be someone watching and they are in trouble? Could it be someone watching and, and, and they are waiting for a change in their life? Thank you, Father, for your fresh water. Thank you, Father, for the ministry of your angels right now. And the beautiful presence and power of your Holy Spirit. We worship you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Wonderful. Thank you for joining in. In a moment, we'll be getting into the Word and praying some more in the Spirit. Unknown tongues. I'll be back as we listen to this hymn. Let's worship God with this hymn. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. I'll be back. We're about to sing a song, wonderful song, uh, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Beautiful song. Listen to this hymn and be blessed. So sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise. Just to know the Savior, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him. How I prove Him all and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust Him more. So glad. I've learned to trust Him, precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that He is with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus. 
Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. How sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing blood and in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing flood Jesus, Jesus how I trust Him how I prove Him o'er and o'er Jesus, Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust Him Yes, it is sweet to trust in Jesus Just from sea and self to seize Just from Jesus simply taking Life and rest and joy and peace Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him How I prove Him o'er and o'er Jesus, Jesus precious Jesus oh for grace to trust Him more Hallelujah God is good and His mercy endures forever we bless His name We'll continue from where we stopped uh, in the morning. In the morning we talked about the glory within and we'll be looking now at the Father of glory. So we'll be opening this from Ephesians chapter number 1. Ephesians chapter number 1 and we will read. Thank you Father for your overflowing presence. Ephesians chapter number one, so we'll read particular, particularly verse number 17. <clears throat> Delicate pages. Thank you, Lord, for your word. As we get into your word, our hearts our minds are ready to receive your engrafted word which is able to save our souls fill us today renew our mind renew our thinking change our lives we receive revelation from your word by faith in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Amen Glory to God Hallelujah. So we are going to be continuing from where we stopped in the morning. We looked at uh, the glory within and we established the fact in that particular uh, uh, session that uh, the Spirit of God is giving us an awesome image of God inside of us and that's the glory of God. So today of this session we'll be looking at the father of glory so in Ephesians chapter number one it's good that you read the introduction of the book so Paul an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God which is verse one to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus uh, amazing when you read each one of these opening books you find out the experience of the apostle and uh, the believers in his day you would see you can see the experience and he says grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ then in verse 3 he says blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing 
in heavenly places in Christ. When you read, when you read this, you wonder who are these people that is so uh, preciously held in the hands of God. Who are these people? The believer. The one who's born again. You, you are the one that he is talking about. Blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. So, uh, uh, those of you okay, who are looking to uh, this and to that to help yourself in one way or the other, would you pay attention to the glory of God inside of you? It says, you are blessed with all spiritual blessing. Now, he didn't say when you attend a lot of prayer meetings or when you fast and pray, you will be blessed. He said, he has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now, either you take this or you take something else. Either you take this or you take something else. Every time the word of God comes to you, either you are believing it or you are not believing it. There is no fence in between. I choose to believe. You are blessed with all spiritual blessings. I'm blessed with all spiritual blessings. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings. Have you heard someone before saying that, uh, I want... Uh, my mother to pray for me or I want this person to pray for me or I want that elder to pray for me and stuff like that. Elder, elder praying for you is great, wonderful. But the scripture said you are blessed with all spiritual blessings. What a church. What a bride. You are blessed with all spiritual blessings. You are blessed with all all spiritual blessings. All. All. Which other blessing is left that you are looking for? Which other blessing is left that I am looking for? You see, uh, lack of knowledge will keep the church in the dark. Lack of knowledge will keep people in the dark. Like it is said in history, the dark ages. It's not because there were no discovery of electricity, but knowledge was in there. In the same way in the church, if you don't know and accept the fact that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, you are going to be looking for a blessing that you already have. All through this session, the Spirit of God is saying to you, pay attention to his glory inside of you. Pay attention, concentrate on that. What are you looking for? What are you praying for? What do you want that he hasn't given to you? He said, you are blessed with all all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. All spiritual enablement. Supernatural enablement. The word blessing, you need to understand, it's not a thing, but it's a supernatural force that can bring things to you that can close your loans, that can work synonymously with your anointing. You are a blessed woman. You are a blessed man. Concentrate on that blessing. Now you need to understand this. If you are blessed and someone is cursing you, which one of these two forces will work. Some people dare to believe the opposite one. They dare to believe and care and bother about the curse working. When we first started out in ministry, there were a few folks that were uh, 
I think they didn't believe that God can use a woman. So they were against my agape. That time she was Joanna. They were against my agape and uh, and I think someone told them, someone told my agape that uh, someone cursed, put a curse on her because she's preaching the gospel. I laughed over it when I heard. Thank God I was in a life that time. You should marry the right man, not the right, not the wrong man that will that will invite curse to you and welcome curses that was rain on you. She they told her that someone cursed place a curse on her. And so she told me. When she told me, I took her to the story in the book of Numbers about the prophet Balaam and the king Balak who wanted to curse Israel who went to pick a choice prophet, Balaam. Pro Balaam, prophet Balaam is a prophet when he speaks. When I read that scripture, I was very, very blessed. The way he speaks. Before the anointing comes on him to prophesy, he will speak, acknowledge. This is Old Testament. He will acknowledge his calling. I am Balaam, the son of, he called his father's name. The one whose eyes are open to see, he says. Now, he wasn't seen yet. How he acknowledges in the Old Testament. You are a son and a daughter of God. How much have you acknowledged that? Balaam says, the one whose eyes is open to see. Once he said that, the Spirit of God comes upon him after he gives the, offers the necessary sacrifices. The Spirit of God comes upon him and he starts to see and he starts to declare. Now, many know him. When he sees, when he declares, it's exactly what he said. They know him, so that's why the king went to call him, that these, fo these folks have come. And every nation which they pass through, they eat it up like warm. They eat it up like, you know, they just, the nation is closed. I want to curse these people for me, Balak hired Balaam. And not to go into the details so much, but I told my agape about that man. And that time, I was listening to a couple of radio programs, uh, Rama Today, by the renowned Blessed Memory, Kennedy Agin. And that same time, he was teaching over the radio, and he spoke about what follows the Christian. He says, goodness and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. It was like a seal for me. I knew from the story of Balaam that you couldn't, curse, you couldn't curse Israel because Israel is a blessed people. You couldn't curse them. And the scripture says in the book of Proverbs, curse causeless will not work. They use the word highlight. Will not highlight. Curse causeless will not highlight. So which blessing will you focus on? You're focusing on that black magic. You're focusing on that work that is done against you. Have you heard Christians before? Who meditate on the evil people doing against them more than they meditate on the good God has done for them? Have you met? I have seen them all, so many of them. From the beginning of our ministry, I've seen them. They come by numbers. Oh, my uncle did this black magic against me. And that's why my wife is unable to conceive. Oh, my auntie did this black magic against me. That's why I didn't finish my college. Oh, my sister did this black magic against me. That's why my business ain't working the way it should. Oh, black magic. Oh, black magic. Oh, black magic. The question is, hello, brother, who are you? I'm a Christian, pastor. If you are a Christian... 
What do you believe? Do you believe in the black magic over God's blessings? My brother said in his, uh, in his uh, updates recently, he said, I'm a blessed man and the blessing is invoked on me. We are a blessed generation. You are a blessed man. You are a blessed woman. You need to understand. And a blessed man and a blessed woman is waste of time to place a curse on them. And so I told my agape many years ago, this, this is 2005 if I'm precise, way back. And I told her, let's see, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's no use to place a curse on a person who's blessed. You are blessed. And the hand of God's upon your life. Now, as a pastor, we don't place curse on people. Now, people may take curse by themselves. That's their choice. As a pastor, we don't place curse on people. However, we can rebuke very much according to the Spirit. But we don't place curse on people. People have done things to me that I could easily place a curse on them. But I know the anointing that I receive is not to destroy kill or steal the anointing that i have received from the holy spirit it is to bless it is to love it is to bring many to the knowledge of jesus christ the anointing of the holy spirit should not steal kill and destroy like the devil and so many years ago i told my wife i told her and that story spells out what i told her balaam tried to prophesy against Israel, to place a curse on Israel. He tried and tried and tried, but he couldn't. Every time he makes that acknowledgement, I am Balaam, the son of my father, whose eyes are open to see. Very bold confession. Very amazing. Bold confession. And then his eyes are open to see immediately. And as his eyes are open to see, what happens next, what you see is that the Spirit of God comes upon him mightily and he starts to see. But every time he did that, offer the sacrifice to God, even though God told him what to do, he didn't listen. The gain was so much attractive. I don't know why. He was, he was one of the prophets in the scripture that was called the mad prophet. Mad with gain. He wasn't mentally deranged, but he was mad with gain. He was mad with gain. He wanted to prophesy against Israel, and that's what Balak wanted him to do. So he tried helping Balak, but it wouldn't work. Every conspiracy against you, every conspiracy against your family, every conspiracy against your work, the ministry, May it be exactly like Balaam and Balak in the name of Jesus. And so the same thing they told my agape. We are blessed today. We are blessed with children. We are blessed in the ministry. God is blessing us. God is increasing us. Even in the pandemic, he's given us amazing opportunities. You are a blessed man. It's the pause I'm trying to pause here to remind you. God has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And someone rightly said, we need to bring those blessings into the earth. <laughs> yeah, you should learn to bring it into the earth. Look at Balaam. Before he sees, he acknowledges. It's like an oracle. I am Balaam, the son of my father whose eyes are open to see. And the Spirit of God hits him and he starts to see. He starts to see. Who are you? How much have you acknowledged who you are? How much have you acknowledged who you are? Giants don't crawl. Babies do. You are born of God. And whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Hallelujah. Okay, so he says, we are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And the scripture tells us that we are chosen in him before the foundation of the world. 
predestination. Your life is planned. My life is planned. From this part of the world, they look at people having a settled life. A settled life will be a good job. They consider that to be a settled life. Though it sounds like a joke, but in a sense, it is accept acceptable. You have a good job, you have a house, okay? And then a wife and children, that is kind of a settled life, you know? Now, how many of us who thought we had a settled life during this pandemic found out that that settled life that you thought you had was not settled at all. Only settlement that we have in this life is the settlement of what God has done for us. That only is permanent. Rest your faith and build yourself in that truth. God settles you. Man cannot settle you. No amount of job that you have, no amount of money that you have, I've seen very wealthy people die of sickness they are not supposed to die of. They invest into ICU equipment in their own home. They are that big. When they sleep, the ICU equipment tests and run every part and organ of their body, feedback in sounds and in graphics. And there is an employed professional Doctor, medical doctor, watching the organs of their hearts, the organs of their body, yet they die so wealthy. Money will never settle you. Money might settle the society, might give you some stand, but it will never settle you. Our settlement is by God. Our settlement is given to us by God. And those who think they are settled, when the pandemic started, you figure out that oh, in your own home, coronavirus is going to come into your own home. So how settled? That house that you are treating like, oh, it's your property. Yes, it is yours. When coronavirus comes into it, how will you tell coronavirus, I, I am settled. Can you go to the next building, please? There's not such thing. Everyone is exposed to it. And thanks be unto God who keeps us from every danger. When we go through the fire, his word says we will not be burned. When we go through the water, his word says we will not be drowned. That's what his word says. So I boldly say, I refuse to fear what coronavirus or pandemic or government or any situation can do unto me. For the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. What are you saying? All right. So we're coming to our main verse tonight, and that is verse number 17, Ephesians chapter number 1, verse number 17. And then he says, That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, when we look into this verse, we truly need the spirit of wisdom and knowledge. Imagine if you gave your child all the estate and all that you have. Okay, I wouldn't, let me not put it that way because most of you would not have an estate. I don't have an estate. So, presently. So, let's put it this way. All the property you have, all that you have, you gave it to your child. Do you think your child needs wisdom? Absolutely. Knowledge required. So now, now you can understand this. Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And now in verse number 17 it says, For God, thank that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. 
two important things. We're so blessed, we need the spirit of wisdom and knowledge. Unfortunately, just a few bunch of us can recognize these blessings that God has given to us. We were raised by saints ruled people. We were raised by those who are dictated to by their senses. No food in the house, we are poor. No, no connection, I don't have any help. No car, no house, oh, I am, no, I am nothing. And so these people are dictated upon by these devices, or better put, vices. No. Naked we came from our mother's womb, and naked we would return. The fact is, in between both nakedness, we need clothes, and we need good stuff. The scripture tells us that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. And if you have all spiritual blessings, you need wisdom, and you need knowledge. Otherwise, you squander it. Otherwise, you can even sell your birthright. Many things you could you do. The point in this verse, the Father of glory has given you everything. If the Father of glory gave you everything, how are you supposed to carry yourself? This is the discussion tonight. How are you supposed to carry yourself? Are you supposed to carry yourself like someone who's looking for a job? Or are you supposed to carry yourself like someone who has connection with the one who creates jobs and who gives opportunity to people? This time of glory, these three days of glory, is a time for you to sit, relax, and really look into what you believe, what you say, and what you're doing. Is all these, are they suit? Or one is red, another is yellow, another is purple. What you believe, what you're thinking, what you're saying, and what you're doing. So, the Father of glory. Now, the first thing I want you to do here is to imagine yourself that you have a physical father who has everything. I'm talking about physical father. Who has everything. How will your confidence be like? Now, if you've answered that question, the next question is, your, confident right, your confidence right now, does it measure up to that example? The answer mostly will be no. Why? It's not because God hasn't done something, but it is because we are not doing what we're supposed to do with what God has done for us. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's why you cannot drag and fight over a land. You cannot drag and fight over some pension, some money, uh, some gold, and stuff like that. You stay with what he's provided. You take hold with what is given to you. Put that word in your mouth. Put that word in your mouth. Be confident enough be confident enough of what he has done for you. He's the father of glory. And, and like we take it in the school of thoughts, God give birth to gods and animal give birth to animals and plant reproduce plants. And so now the father of glory will give birth to glory. Now, you and I, in a sense, when you look at this verse, we are the glory of God. Now, if you are the glory of God, what it means is that you are the part of him, like the scripture says in John's Gospel, chapter number uh, 15. It says, we are the branches. See? He is the vine, and we are the branches. Now, it's good to know that most of the plants and trees, the fruit grows in the branch. Most of them. Very little we have the fruit growing in the tuber or in the root. But it grows in the branches. In the branches. So you are the fruit bearing part of the body of Christ. Now if you are the fruit bearing part of the body of Christ, 
You have to match your mouth with your thinking. You have to match your thinking with your mouth. You have to match your thinking and mouth with your actions. You are the glory of God. Now, when you, as the glory of God, walk into your office, how do you work? How are you in the midst of your in-laws? How are you at work? What is your mind like? When you are at home, okay, do you have a plan for your family? Do you have a plan for your job? Do you have a plan? Do you have a target this year? Okay, this year is about winding up. We all spent it fighting coronavirus. I'm talking about governments and everyone. The church praying, standing, helping, feeding homeless people charity works and stuff like that. We all spent almost a full year doing that. But if our God blessed us with all spiritual blessings, in the presence of pandemic, you will accomplish the target that you set at the beginning of the year before the end of the year. The God that blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus if I want to show you a specific expression of this blessing, I will take you to the book of Corinthians. And you will you will be, you will be so blessed when you, when you see this. I'll take you to the book of Corinthians chapter number. Hmm, second Corinthians chapter number. Okay, nine. Let me read for you. Verse number eight. These blessings is given to us. 2 Corinthians chapter number 9. Let me read verse 8 for you. Listen to this. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Yesterday, a wonderful woman of God visited us in our home. And she was telling us how she survived the coronavirus times. She said, my children didn't come to visit me. My grandchildren didn't come to visit me. She said, I had no food. I had no food. And they were giving food somewhere. She said, some Christian folks were giving food somewhere. How oh, blessed are those who have, who have that much and is distributing to give. And she said they were given food at a particular point and, and it was just like almost a kilometer plus. And I'm not able to walk there. When I walk there, I get so exhausted and I can stay in the queue. And there's a big queue there. All those who fed the hungry during this coronavirus, this pandemic, watch your life, how the Lord will bless you. Watch your life. Those who supported so many, gave food to so many. At one time when this coronavirus came to my home and died in my home, I was told, uh, one of our friends sent me a flyer, a digital flyer of a group which they've started and that group will connect them to require doctor medical help and also food supplies. Can you imagine that? Food supplies. Can you imagine that? I bless the name of the Lord for men and women who rise in time of need and not working works of darkness in time of need. They rise in time of need. And when coronavirus came to our home and died there in our home, the believers in church, they were responding to our needs. This is buying this uh, hand sanitizer. Another is buying this and another is buying that. There was not a single fear in our hearts. I, I want to bring to you some mini, minute, small, small details about how this coronavirus died in our home. Maybe during these three days of glory, I will bring it to you. I, I'm going to bring my agape to the studio. And we're going to discuss this and you're going to hear how we killed coronavirus in our house. If you are still scared of the pandemic, 
you are still in the shadow of the fight. You have to get into the real fight. You have to face this coronavirus. God has blessed you. Here, the scripture I took you to now, it says, God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Now, the grace and the blessings and the glory, they are all encapsulated in your inheritance given to you by the Lord Jesus Christ. How do you operate this? In this verse, he says, God is able to make all grace abound towards you. He's able to make so. Has he made it is the question. He has. Pastor, how do we operate it? If you read before, you will know how to operate it. How to operate all grace, all sufficiency, every good work kind of blessing upon your life. When you back up, you will see how to operate it. It says here, <clears throat> excuse me, in verse number 5, you can see it right in the previous verse, but it's okay, let's read from verse number 5. It says, therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort you, brethren, that they would go before you unto you and make up beforehand your bounty, whereof ye had noticed before, that the same might be ready as a matter of bounty and not as of not as of covetousness. Not, not that I am one more. Then he says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. And then he says in verse 7, before we get to the verse which, which I was reading to you, every man according as he has proposes in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And then he says, and God is able to make all grace. Now you get it now, how to make that all grace abound toward you. How to make that all grace abound toward you. And every time you say you don't have, you deny the all grace, all sufficiency provision of God. Okay, Pastor, what if what I have is for only petrol? How can I say that I have when I have only this for petrol? I want to ask you, the dress you are wearing, is that the only dress you have? Why didn't you wear all the dresses and come today? I mean, to sit there. Why didn't you go into your wardrobe and wear the sari, wear the kuta, wear the tupata, uh, wear the, uh, I don't know what it is, and wear the tuban? I don't know. Wear all those things. You look funny. In the same way, God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. His wisdom has made available part-time what we need. And God is not a waster that will pour on us what we do not need. And as you manage that resources, you move to the next level where you don't just meet your need, you meet the needs of other people. It's a lifestyle to meet the needs of other people. If you are this kind of a person who's blessed, when you think of yourself, you begin to think of other people. There is a realm where you come to, God supplies, my God supplies all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. There is another realm where he makes all grace abound towards you so that you having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. Why? He who sows sparingly reaps how? Sparingly. He who sows bountifully reaps bountifully. So now you come to the place. In this day, un understand your finances. Understand the secret of your finances. The secret of your finances, how you use what you have. That's a secret to your increase in finances. Your increase in finances is not solely based on God. 
your increase in finances is not wholly based on you. It's a partnership. It's a partnership. He gives to you and you use it and you sustain yourself with it and you go. Now listen to this. I speak to your cards, to your account. I speak to your home every time before the middle of the month. Many people experience dryness. I was there experiencing dryness. Experiencing dryness before the middle of the month. Experiencing dryness because the salary or the support, you know, from the ministry in my case, from the ministry is not sufficient. But when we started to understand the supernatural bounty of God, how he supplies us, we started to get gifts, we started to have people think about us, and we do not solely depend on our salary. Every time you depend solely on your salary, you are cutting up the supernatural supply of God. Put in your mouth, think in your mind, his supernatural supplies. Let it be registered there. Your father is the father of glory. Your father is a father of glory. Think of the next level of your finances. Think of the next level of your finances. Think of the next level of your finances and start to say it. Now, it's very easy to talk big. It's very easy to see big. But the practicality of your talking big will be found in the very nitty gritty details of your present financial dealings and how you're going about your life. And so if we can look into your present financial dealings and in your life, we can see the breadth and life of the practicality of your confession, of the big things you're talking about. When I became a pastor, I couldn't wait to, to, to help families. You didn't hear it. When I became a pastor, I was receiving 700 rupees. I think it started with 500 rupees as a support from the church. And I couldn't wait to support families. I mean, as a ministry. I couldn't wait to support. Because I understood he who sows sparingly would reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully would reap bountifully. So the Father of glory gives, richly gives to all. Upgraded or degrades none. The oxygen you're taking, the content and its quality is the same that I'm taking. And is the same so-called big shots or whosoever they may be, they are taking. Say one moment, I am rich. Say one moment, I'm fully supplied. Say one moment, the wisdom of God is working in my finances. The wisdom of God is working in my life. I am fully contented with what I have. I'm making progress to the next level. My father is glory. I am the glory of my father. When you begin to speak like this, speak like this, you begin to order your finances the way you ought to go. That dryness, that wishing, that desires, no more. In this pandemic, may his increase meet you. Your father is the father of glory. The father of glory. And the father of glory is the God of glory. In book of Acts, the scripture tells us, Acts chapter number 7, the scripture tells us that he is the God of glory. Act 7. Let's uh, read uh, from verse 2. And, and, and he said, Men and brethren and fathers, hearken, the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Charon. So here he says, the Father, the God of glory, appeared to our father Abraham, the God of glory. He is glorious, and he is your father. 
He's giving you all that you need. Say one moment. God is connecting me to the right people and the right time. God is opening doors to me that are of this season taking me to my next season. I am fully supplied. I am blessed. I am leaving my level to another level that he's made and prepared for me. Your father is the father of glory. See and talk that way and handle your present level of finances, your present level of the blessings and the divine verities that he's given to you. Handle it with precise, accurate wisdom and knowledge. Remember what you spent and how you spent it. Think of it very clearly. Don't go on with the lone kind of lifestyle. See, we all need support. There is nothing wrong in taking loan. We all need support. The inheritance that you receive from your parents is a support. It's not what you worked for. It's a support. But some people act as though they worked for it, you know. They act as though it's theirs. They even ask their parents, give it before the parents dies. Before the parents give them, they ask for it. It's such a dishonor. Some even throw away their, their parents away and put them somewhere and take the property. They forget that they will give birth to children. That the children also will handle them. So, God has blessed you. You are a blessed man. Know that. No curse will work in your life. So, I was telling you about loan. Every one of us needs support and every one of us gets support. Be practical about your loan. If you want to take a loan, be practical. Don't just take a loan because the government is given a scheme or because there's a provision or someone is there to give it. If you're taking a loan, be very practical about it. I have seen saints who suffer under the burden of loan terribly. Very, very, very terribly. Not one, not two, not three. If you have to take a loan, fine. But remember, remember, don't take a loan because, it's of, because of its availability. Or because, or because, I don't know, don't just take loans. Be very practical. Be very, very practical. And so you don't get frustrated and thinking what's happening, what's happening to my life and stuff like that. I'm just paying loans and paying interest and stuff like that. Think. In the name of business, you don't just go and double loan upon your neck when you haven't done all the necessary studies about what you're going to invest in. You can't just get into that. Your finances, your life, your properties is a blessing, manifestation from the Lord. And don't rest your assurance on them. He has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. God is the God of glory and you are his child and you are glory. You must speak and shine like glory. You must talk like glory. You must carry yourself like glory. From the very onset in our ministry, from the start, I never talk poor. You need to understand this. I was born and raised in a home of a business tycoon as a father. And his brother was a thicker, bigger business tycoon. And uh, I had these assumptions that I was going to be a better business tycoon. And I didn't understand how better business tycoon I was going to be. Until now I understand uh, when I'm doing the business of God. But that time I thought I was going to be doing a secular business like my father, bringing 
suitcases and bags of money at the end of each day's transaction, business, which they do, manufacturing, uh, 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 you know, manufacturing the resources, natural resources to become consumables, you know, or to into state where it can be turned into different products. My father and his brother, they did that beautifully, and they were successful business tycoons, amazing, popular. And I thought I was going to end up being, being that. So I grew up thinking I was going to be a business tycoon, handling money like my father did. But when I came into the ministry, it looked like the opposite completely. But not one day, not one day, I thought I was poor. Even though I lacked, I lacked, but not one day I thought I was poor. Someone was talking to me years ago and said, Pastor, come to my poor house. Come to my poor house. I don't have a poor house. I won't talk poor because I want you to respect me or something. Speaking poverty is not humility. Saying you are poor, you don't have anything. I see folks who are expecting support to be given to them financially or by foodstuff during this pandemic. They own houses. I see, what is that? That's, that's a need mentality. It's a poverty mentality. Have you noticed people who are fine, when they see this is free, they go on the line. They have been fine. They are fine, fully supplied. They have rice at home. But now they see the government is giving free bag of rice. They are standing in the queue. The free mentality has taken them over. Poverty. Poverty. Why don't you think of those who have the need of it? I never talked poor. My father was of that status. His brother was of that status. I never talked poor. Even though what I experienced was completely opposite of what I was brought up with. What I saw in the life of my father. My dad. Blessed memory, wonderful man of God. A man of faith. He lived in faith before my eyes. I saw, he would tell me, Edmonds, don't worry, the Lord is going to provide. He would tell me. And he sings and walks in the house. I remember one of the songs he used to sing. Paralyzed, Satan is paralyzed, paralyzed. Satan lost the fight at Calvary. At Calvary, those strange things, that binds us, they are over. Paralyzed. He walks so slowly and he sings that. And before some few hours, someone comes and knocks on the door. I open and say, oh, uh, Joseph Okorode. Ah, and they start to speak our dialect. And then he starts to talk. And then suddenly the guy bring one month, some bunch. And they said, uh, this is your, I was owing something like that. I was sorry that I came late and stuff like that. Right before my eyes, I saw the man live the life of faith before he passed away from this world. Now, I'm saying this to say, I was raised in a different kind of a family, and when God's call upon my life highlighted, I experienced opposite of what I was raised, but never ever said I was poor. Confessing poverty is walking the will of the devil, which is stealing, killing, and destruction. You're not poor. You are the son and daughter of glory. And he who sows sparingly, would reap sparingly. He who so bountifully would reap bountifully. And in this note, I would like to draw the curtain for the last session tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So be conscious of what you carry. What do you carry? The anointing of the Holy Spirit. The anointing of all sufficiency in all things unto every good work. Every good work. That's what you carry. That's what I carry. You know. To get the funds. 
might be easy, but to distribute the fund to the right persons is not as easy as that. And so when you are thinking of whom to help, you pray and the Lord will reveal it to you. And the Lord will reveal it whom, how you should help what during this time. The Lord's hand is upon your life and his glory will never depart from you. As we pray in the spirit, I want you to make those confessions. Hmm? I am fully supplied. My needs are met. I am moving from glory to glory. Everything my hands touches, the blessings of Almighty God is manifested in it. I am the glory of my Father. My Father is the God of glory. He is the Father of glory. I am the glory of my Father. I am the glory of my Father. I refuse lack. I refuse to talk poverty. I refuse to overly uh, place myself. I operate in the wisdom and in the knowledge of the word of God. In the name of Jesus, I am fully supplied. I'm fully supplied. I'm fully supplied. I'm fully supplied. I'm walking in the all grace level. I'm walking in the all sufficient level. I am walking in all goodness level. In the name of Jesus, I am fully supplied. My Father is glory. I am a descendant of the glory of God. I am glory of my Father. Mapke Baba Nembro do Glopre Kaskondembre Digri Grigroso Krem do Brahaya Hamo Shalebo Kalegede Sikades Mapko Bekeng Jusokre Di Gradla Mahashke Topokma Atema Malabadi Mapko Begede Skiprodo Sombrende Grendo Bla Atemo Okche Zegride Emohol of Lobo Haletis Opre and Jusope Dene Eloflo of Jusukri Yakrota and Skenda Brandera Babro Tescopre Digre de Soche Gradada you are descendants of glory you are the descendants of glory your father is the father of glory poverty is not your portion lack is not your portion you are not just surviving but the glory of god is rising on you the glory of god is rising on you the glory of god is rising on you the doors are opening to you. The doors are opening to you. You are fully supplied. Glory to God. Meso bende ripra krados mok tembrendo ro kroksaksha zedira grahaya. O na masate badebro do koshono manahaya. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now we're going to continue to pray, but I want to say a few things that I feel the Spirit of God is showing me. There's a very rare opportunity that's coming your way. And I want you to open your eyes to see that opportunity. And you're going to use that opportunity not only to be a blessing to your family, immediate family and your responsibility, but you will be exactly what the scripture says, to have to give to those who are in need. And one of the foremost and most important giving that we can do is to give for the gospel. It is not uh, it's not an overly statement. The gospel, when you promote the gospel in the right way, there's so many, so many ministries, so many men of God walking in the light and in the truth, and that's it. And so the real opportunity is coming your way. The real opportunity is coming your way. Take advantage of that, and your life will never remain the same. Thank you for being part of the program. This is the first day of the three days of glory. And one of the best ways you can attend this is to attend it fasting in your capacity. And the Lord will reveal wonderful things to you. The darkness, the cloud will disappear and the confusion will go off. And that which is troubling you will be no more, even without you commanding it, even without you addressing it. It will give way to you. The glory of God is risen upon you. You are descendants of the glory of God. It's resting on you. So you take some 30 minutes right now. Pray in the spirit. 
Pray in the Spirit fervently. Pray in the Spirit beautifully. And begin to confess that you are descendant of the glory of God. And God is your Father. He is God of glory. Like he's called Father of Spirits, he is God of glory. He is Father of glory. Go ahead, decree that, decree that. As, as I'm wrapping up in the studio, I'm standing up, I want to move around and I want to talk, you know, I want to pray in the Spirit. Go ahead and do it in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Jesus is Lord. Satisfy the human heart. Money cannot satisfy the human heart. Pleasure cannot satisfy the human heart. Comfort cannot satisfy the human heart. Nothing entirely in this world can satisfy the human heart. Jesus is the Son of God. He is the Word of God made flesh. God's Word made flesh. And He walked the earth. And He faced the things that we're facing, passed through the difficulties that we passed through, and was without sin, the Bible says. He was without sin. He was a sinless. The seed of God's Word became flesh. And he died on the cross for my sins and for your sins. And the Bible says, Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The name of the Lord Jesus. You can call upon that name wherever you are and you can be saved today. If you are not yet born again, we invite you to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life by praying this prayer. O oh Lord God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I ask Jesus to come into my heart to be the Lord of my life. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I am saved. I am born again. I am a child of God. I now have Christ dwelling in me. I am a new creation. Hallelujah. If you have just said that prayer, congratulations, you are now a child of God. To receive more information on how you can grow as a Christian, please get in touch with us by calling any of the numbers displayed on your screen or visit our website. Nothing entirely in this Praise world. Praise the Lord. I am Edmond Sokorade and I want to invite you for an experience that you hardly have every now and then. Glory. Glory. Three days of glory. 15, 16, and 17. Two sessions each day. The first session is 10 a.m. and the second session is 5 p.m. Now, fasting and praying and attending this meeting is the best way ever you can ever uh, enter into this meeting. The glory of God. The glory of God. I'm inviting you. Are you a pastor? Are you a believer? Do you want to see the life of God emanating after you? I mean, out of you, oozing out of you like a perfume? Despite the situation. Allowing the Spirit of God to shine through you despite the situation. This program is an appointment for you. It's October 15, 16, and 17. Two sessions each day. Solid teaching and experience of the Holy Spirit. Three days of glory. I'll see you there online. Internet Church. And the Facebook page, Internet Church. And also will be simultaneously online on YouTube. I'll see you there three days of glory. Jesus is Lord. Praise. Welcome to Love Embassy of All Nations, a Bible church and a leadership training center by Edmunds Okwara Day Ministries, EOM. We have seen many lives transformed. You are next for transformation. Our if church is made Father, up of various the ministries, state of Israel, electronic and, and print media, church Israel. services, live Bible training sessions and also through our website. Humanitarian outreach, helping the widows, widowers, aged and the needy, anti-suicide and success campaign. 
the annual love feast, world changers day and vision day. To get more information please refer to our brochure, or log into our website www.loveembassy.in, or www.okoroday.org. These are our monthly activities, Sunday morning worship service starts at 7.30 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. respectively, Wednesday Bible study starts at 6 p.m. Every first Sunday is our healing service, one combined service. Every Saturday at 3 p.m. is a general prayer, healing and deliverance service, where we have the prayer line. 11 a.m. every second Saturday is our baptismal class. Every last Friday is our school of prayer, where we come to learn, pray and intercede. Three hours experience of real biblical prayer. And usually there will not be PhD on the following day which is Saturday. You can watch anytime and from anywhere our TV programs, free monthly DVDs, Teach All Nations TV report, short movies and and more on the internet by subscribing to our YouTube channel Teach All Nations. Love Embassy of All Nations, ministering God's love in a hurting world.